All right, so now that we've discussed what a linear differential equation is, what it looks like, how to identify them, we need to talk about solutions, right? How do you solve a linear differential equation? The idea is actually kind of simple. You, there's a trick, right? And, and the trick is to say, well, you know what? If, if this left-hand side, if that was a derivative, if, if, if this was just the derivative of something, right? Then I just integrate both sides and I'm done, okay? Um, but typically what happens is this left-hand side is not a derivative, okay? Um, right, so we can think about, you know, how would you, how would you even end up with something like this, right? Um, well, you think about doing a product rule derivative, right? Product rule gives you two terms when you take the derivative. Um, but this, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. It doesn't look right. So what you do is you... You multiply by, and this is going to be some unknown function so far. So we call it mu of x, okay? I don't know why. Mu is the, is, is the default here, so that's a Greek letter mu. Um, so we multiply both sides by mu of x. We get mu of x dy dx plus mu of x, f of x, y is equal to mu of x, g of x, okay? So you multiply both sides, and this side here, what we want is we want this side to be the derivative with respect to x of some function. Okay, well, I mean, we can kind of see what it has to be, right? It has to be like mu of x times y, right? Why? Well, what happens if you take the derivative of mu of x times y? Well, product rule says we do the derivative of the first, mu prime times y plus first, times the derivative of the second, which is just dy dx, okay? And now we kind of compare what we have here to what we have there, and we say, well, look, this, um, these match, right? So we need this to match with that. So that means what we need is we need mu prime of x to be equal to mu of x, f of x, okay? And so now we want to try to solve for this mu prime, right? Well, what we can do is we divide both sides by mu of x. Mu prime of x over mu of x is equal to f of x. And now we integrate both sides. Right? And the great thing about this side is this is exactly a natural log derivative, right? This is, this is going to give us the natural log of mu of x. We're not going to worry about absolute values here. Um, okay, that's just the natural log of mu. And on this side, we just have, well, I don't know, because we don't know what that function is, right? So we just leave it, we'll leave it as that antiderivative. Um, we want to solve for this mu, so mu of x should be e to the integral of fx dx, okay? So you introduce this mu, okay? Um, now, this mu has a name. It's called an integrating factor. And the reason we call it the integrating factor is now that we've introduced it, we multiply both sides by this mu of x, right? Well, the whole point is that this left-hand side becomes a derivative, right? So this is now just mu of x times y, and that's going to be equal to mu of x times g of x, right? 
And so that means that mu of x times y should be, well, the integral of mu of x times g of x, right? So we integrate that. As long as we can evaluate that integral, then all we have to do to solve for y is divide by this mu of x, right? And we're done. So that's the standard technique. It's, it's a method that works for essentially every linear differential equation, right? The only, the only barrier in principle is that maybe you don't know how to evaluate this integral, or maybe you don't know how to evaluate that integral, right? Um, other than that, we have a solution in principle for every possible linear differential equation, at least ones where these are continuous functions, because as long as f and g are continuous, fundamental theorem of calculus guarantees that we can do those antiderivatives, right? Even if we can't express them in terms of elementary functions.